Hello everyone and welcome to my session. I am Ada Nduka Oyum and unfortunately I am making this recording all the way from Lagos, Nigeria. I was really looking forward to making this presentation in person of, um, with you all at Dublin. But thank you so much for joining my session. I am the founder of SheCode Africa and I'm also the co-founder of Open Source Community Africa. Open Source Community Africa is a community, one of the largest communities, open source um, developer communities for open source enthusiasts, open source contributors, maintainers in Africa. I am also the founder of Shikud Africa, like I mentioned, Shikud Africa is a non-profit organization and also the largest women in tech community for African women with over 17,000 African women, which is why I'm going to be giving a talk on building a thriving and healthy open source ecosystem in Africa. Because of my experience in this, I'm going to be sharing the lessons that we have learned while trying to um, not only build open source community in Africa, but also make the African tech ecosystem much more um, intrigued about the open source space and also active in the open source space. So also meet me, um, aside being the founder of Open Source Community Africa and Chicode Africa, I am currently engaged as community manager for the Google Developer Programs and the Women Technical Programs in Sub-Saharan Africa at Google. And because of um, me having a lot of interest and um, expertise in developer relations, I decided to also branch out and start something small, um, tag DevRelights. DevRelights is a platform initiative that I created for anyone who's looking to get started in developer relations, basically newbies who are looking to get started in developer relations. Now, aside all of this, I am also a technical writer and a tech content creator. I make tech contents on um, TikTok. So first off, what is this talk going to focus about? How do we create communities when we, um, you know, when the idea of open source community Africa kicked off? The thought around this was how do we create communities that is active enough and engage with contributors to ensure open source projects you know benefit from their innovative thinking i started open source community africa in 2018 with my co-founder samson Godi. samson Godi is someone who has a lot of experience and expertise when it comes to open source contribution he has been contributing and um, active in the um, open source space since childhood with sugar labs and with my experience in building um, developer communities we decided to come together infusing his knowledge of open source contribution and open source development and my knowledge of um, community building developer community building into kicking off what we tag as open source community africa but this was our major question okay we want to start a movement we want to um, make africa not just um not just um users and people who utilize open source technologies but we also want to make them contributors people who are actively contributing to this open source field and also actively you know maintaining open source projects open source tools open source um, development projects and all of that so this was a major question in our mind if we're going to do something like this how do we want to go about it it's one thing to want to start a community and it's another thing to want to make it a movement a movement is like a lifetime thing it could go on and on and on. A community can, you know, exist for a couple of months, it could exist for a couple of years, but we wanted to make something sustainable. So this talk is going to focus on the lessons that we have learned while trying to transform Africa into not just being um, utilizers, but also being creators, open source creators and maintainers. And it would share about the lessons that we have learned as well. So if you are someone who is interested in starting not just an open source community, but also trying to build the ecosystem, the open source ecosystem in your region, or you're really interested in, um, you're really interested in taking a deep dive or um, plugging in into what the African open source ecosystem is doing, then this talk is definitely for you. So this focus area, the talks, um, the focus areas we're uh, looking at for this talk is in four different places. The first is on community because it's a community, it's building a community. So the first is going to be on community. The second is going to be about programs and events. We're going to focus on programs and events that we um, carried out to make sure that we're creating sustainability in this open source ecosystem. The third is partnerships as well, and then the fourth is team. Before we get right into it, this is a report of 2018 by GitHub, um, their October's regional spotlight on Nigeria. Well, I'm going to use Nigeria in this instance because Nigeria is one of the top highest performing developer countries when it comes to the ecosystem here in Africa. We have Nigeria, we have Kenya, we have South Africa. And moving up the list at the moment, we also have um, countries like Rwanda, countries like um, 
Ghana as well. But we're going to focus on Nigeria, just to give you an insight as to what this ecosystem looks like, because it's a report by GitHub. And if you look at this part of the screen, it says that as of 2018, they noticed 1.6x more developers contributing on GitHub, just from Nigeria alone. That shows that there are there is a movement, there is interest of people who are really interested in contributing to open source, people who are really keen in understanding and learning more about the open source um, this thing, ecosystem. It says that Nigeria represents the fourth fastest growing developer community on GitHub. This was as of 2018. And it also says that they also noticed 2.1x more um, organizations as GitHub organizations from Nigerian um, Nigerians. Nigeria is higher on our list of fastest growing countries by organizations created with a 2.1x more organizations created this year than last year as of 2018. And also says that they also noticed 1.8x um, increase in repositories and 1.7x in more open source repositories. All of this we're trying to say is that when we decided to fund this community, it was only an idea. I will bring my idea of building developer communities, you bring your idea of contributing to open source and working with open source developer technologies. And as of 2018, when we started, it was just one country where we had a presence in, and that's Nigeria, because we were all Nigerians. Six founding members and zero chapters, zero community advocates. Nobody knew who, were, who we were, what we were doing. Nobody knew. And as also as of then, the enthusiasm for open source contribution, the enthusiasm, the evangelism, the gospel, all of that about open source wasn't as active as it is right now. So what did we do? First of all, community. Why community? Because if we're trying to build an ecosystem where we wanted to ensure sustainability, where we wanted to make sure that people were benefiting from the positive impact of contributing to open source, of the open source developer ecosystem, we needed to make sure that we had a community platform. But the first two things we had in mind, we needed to set a goal for our community members. If we're going to be, if we're going to be building a community, anyone who's a community manager already understands this. The first thing you need to make sure that you are setting down in place when trying to build a community, regardless of what your community is focused on, is also to set a goal. So for us, the first goal that we set was to make sure that our primary focus was to grow open source awareness. And while growing open source awareness also creates a culture within the ecosystem. Because it's one thing for people to be aware of what open source is all about and you know how to make contributions. And it's another thing to make it a culture, to make them be consistent in contributing to open source and also creating open source tools and technologies. So this was our first major goal. Then the second goal was to create a platform, a community platform where all of these contributors, these maintainers, these advocates, these experts, these enthusiasts who were interested in open source can meet, converge together, feed off each other's energy and help themselves grow as well. So we decided to create this platform and at the moment we currently use Discord for that. But please note, if you notice, these two major goals were what we focused on when it comes to our community. Those were our two primary goals. We wanted to make sure that people were not just aware of open source, but were also actively contributing to it. Because like I mentioned earlier, we wanted to move Africa from just being consumers of open source technologies into being contributors and creators of open source technologies and tools as well. Now, this was where it moved us into. As you can see from the picture, I'm sorry, I know that my screen is currently so bad of the pictures, so I'm going to try to move it around. But if you look at the pictures, you'll notice some of these um, events were closed door events. We were still trying to, you know, grow more awareness, um, you know, create more awareness. So we focused more on beginner events, beginner projects, and all of that. And you can see that the movement was slowly growing. In some pictures, if you notice, you would see some empty seats and in some pictures, you would see some full seats as well. It shows that it was rapidly growing. And the next thing was programs and events. Why programs and events? If we're trying to build a community, a sustainable community, keyword sustainability, if we're trying to build a sustainable community, it's beyond just providing a community platform for them. We also want them to practicalize things that they learned. So we needed to create avenues, not just projects, but avenues, initiatives, programs for them to practice, implement things that they learned during the events that we organized for them. So we decided to run a, um, initiatives like this. One is Open Source Challenge, so the first ever initiative that we ran. And this initiative was focused on them making mostly beginners, making their first open source contributions, and also returning contributors who were also interested in, you know, building their open source skills, make returning contributions, and sometimes even mentor some of these um, individuals who were coming into the field. 
as the first one, we had over 200 people participate in this open source challenge, which is a huge thing for us because it was our first major activity and getting over 200 people from all across Africa, that was a huge thing for us. The next one was our outreach and GSOC webinar. Why did we focus on these two um, specific programs? As of then, I don't think GSOC was um, quite popular or yeah, it had come out um, at that time. But we focused on outreach and GSOC because while we also wanted to make sure that you know we're providing a community platform, we also want and we're trying to you know build awareness within the continent. We wanted to also make sure that these people who were who were um, you know coming bringing together within our community had an opportunity to participate in global open source. Programs programs. And what did we do? We carried out webinars where we focused on helping these people, you know, you know, giving them key points, um, how to succeed and how to apply in um, programs like this, how to participate in programs like this, criteria, requirements, and things like that. More like um, briefing them ahead of time and getting them prepared, work towards getting them into these programs. And from these webinars that were carried out, we noticed that there were more people um, showing up congratulatory messages about getting into the program. That really helped a lot. Like I said, the primary goal for this particular one was that we also wanted to make sure that while we we're trying to focus and build the ecosystem within this continent we also wanted to make sure that we're not just limiting them to projects within africa but also an opportunity to participate in global projects because at the end of the day the goal or what we would term as success is not just within the um, African space, but also out there seeing more Africans contribute in global open source projects or even build global open source projects for um, people across the world to use. So we focused on the outreach and GSOC webinar and we had um, a huge number of participants and also good um, amount of congratulatory messages and you know, positive feedback from people who participated in this webinar. Another thing was starting up Sustain Africa. Like I mentioned, when um, the idea of building this ecosystem, remember the um, topic is building a thriving and healthy ecosystem. To do something like this, we need to think about sustainability. Sustainability is a huge thing. And sustainability goes beyond just thinking about it. It involves you know, having conversations with the people, the stakeholders within the ecosystem and asking them, you know, creating this engaging conversation, creating a space for these conversations to happen, to get feedback and to you know share our own thoughts and ideas. So we reached out to the main sustain team and said, oh, you know what? Nothing like this happens in Africa. So we want to bring this down to Africa. How do we go about it? And in 2020, we had the first Sustain Africa event. It was a huge success. And in 2022, uh, we couldn't have one in 2021 because of COVID. So in 2022, we had the second Sustain Africa event and it was a huge, it was a huge success as well. What did this result in? It resulted in people becoming more aware that, oh, you know what, this open source gospel is here to stay. And it's not just a gospel, it's a movement. It's something that I am aware of. I'm actively involved in it. I know what the key terms are if i'm trying to make maybe my open source project more sustainable if i'm trying to make my open source car more sustainable and overall as a goal i know that i am actively contributing to making the open source ecosystem in africa more sustainable so we started burning and sustain africa then the other thing that we did was run oscar fest if you haven't heard about it i'm going to give you a Overview. So what is Oscar Fest? Oscar Fest is the largest developer festival for open source enthusiasts, advocates, everyone who's basically every stakeholder in open source in Africa. Why did we start Oscar Fest? We wanted Oscar Fest, we started Oscar Fest rather because we wanted um, a headline event after, you know, running community, um, providing the community platform, running multiple open source programs and initiatives to get people interested in open source. We also wanted an avenue, like an opportunity for this community stakeholders, community members, everyone within this ecosystem that we're trying to build, give them an opportunity to meet physically in an open space for them to interact, learn from each other, more like a community event, but a headline, a bigger event. So we had people, the first one um, had so many attendees. We've run two different editions right now. The first was in 2020 and the second was in 2022. We couldn't have one in 2021 as well because of COVID. And this past two events have seen over 2,000 attendees with speakers with, um, across over 40 sessions and track for these two different events. And because of the things that we're doing, we're able to get um, sponsors, including Google, Meta, GitHub, AWS, Ubuntu, and so many others. 
you can um, you know, learn more about this um, Oscar Fest by visiting festival.osiafrica.org, or you can go on Twitter and you know look up this hashtag, hashtag Oscar Fest 2020 or hashtag Oscar Fest 2022. But overall, our goal was while we are trying to, you know build this ecosystem we're trying to make it sustainable we have created a community platform we have created um, programs and events we have created an opportunity to create engaging conversations on sustainability we've made sure that because it's, it's an open source ecosystem everyone is actively involved and then we've also gone a step further to make sure that we are providing them a platform for them to continuously meet and learn from each other i'm going to share a clip first of all this is pictures these are pictures from 2020 versus 2022. The picture from 2022 was taken an hour after the event was over. And when I, I'm specifying or I'm hammering on the one, uh, one hour after the event to show you the impact. If one hour after the event, this as a number of people were able to still gather together for a group picture, then imagine how many people actually participated at the event. This is how much the interest, this is how much the enthusiasm, this is how much the contributions have grown in a space of two years when it comes to like Oscar Fest as an event of its own. I'm going to share a clip from um, that of 2022, very briefly. So this event two years ago changed the trajectory of my career. Oscar Fest! coming from within Africa, welcome to Nigeria, welcome to Lagos. So this event was really amazing. A lot of people came from many different experiences. The speakers were just mind blowing. It's, it's, it's just an energetic vibe. It's like you know, like people are exchanging contacts left and right, learning a lot. And I have been so inspired by the community here. Like I, I'm leaving way more inspired than when I came on point API reference, and it needs to be up to date. How do we achieve this? Oscar has been able to preach or evangelize the world of open source over the past years. It's been amazing because this festival has been held twice and we should attend them. So people now accept that word open source. People want to know more about it. So this is my first time attending a tech event. And at first I was very, very daunted, but I got drew out of my shell and I like talked to people and they're all very, very nice. Like the whole tech community here, this is very, very nice. When it comes to changing the trajectory of your career, all you have is a different audience. This is culture I see would enable a lot of people to be creators. That means more maintainers, and that means more contributors. It's actually so I'm going to pause there because of time and move into the next aspect of focus area of this talk. Now, after building out a sustainable community, we had a community that was growing, you know, was running, and we are registered running um, different initiatives, different programs, and uh, with a headline event that was already pulling crowds into the space, we decided to go a bit further. If we're trying to build a sustainable community, we wanted something that would, you know, transcend even us as founding members or as co-founders, something that would help more people draw them into the space and convince them. And also while we're trying to build a pipeline, uh, while we're trying to build a pipeline within this ecosystem, we also want to make sure that the people who were already existing in that pipeline were moving upstream. So we need to think of partnerships that were sustainable for this ecosystem. And for us to be able to do that, we had to consider the primary needs of the members of this ecosystem, that's the members of the African developer community. This um, primary need could differ across different regions, but here in Africa, the first thing that we wanted to look at for was hiring opportunities. Why hiring opportunities? You know, when people get hiring opportunities in open source space, it gives them, in fact, in any space, it gives them that moral, that conviction that, okay, you know what, there's really an opportunity here for me. Um, if I'm being paid to do something like this, or if I'm being employed to do something that I, you know, actively enjoy, I would definitely go out there and evangelize. So while we were focusing on partnerships, the major goal was to get these people to be the ones to advocate for us, because we had gone, you know, 
if you're trying to build a community, if you're trying to build an ecosystem, you want people who are advocating and doing the word of mouth for you. So you don't spend so much time trying to amplify on what you're doing, but you know, spend you, you get to um, have more time to focus on creating impact for the members of your community and stakeholders within that ecosystem. So the first thing was, you know, provide hiring opportunities for them, give them an opportunity for them to grow in their career and also try to push that pipeline upstream. So what did we do for the hiring opportunity? We partnered with a company called Propel to get um, this company would provide opportunities from organizations that they have, they have, they are partnering and they're working with to provide our own community members um, hiring opportunities, you know, job opportunities, not just within Africa, but all across the globe. Then the other thing that we needed to look out for was gender diversity. Because we, in Africa, we have just one race and everyone is black. We didn't really need to focus on racial diversity. So we focus more on gender diversity. If we're trying to build an ecosystem, there is absolutely no way where we wouldn't want to make sure that it's as diverse in terms of gender as possible. Because while building an ecosystem and you're only focusing on skills and things like that, you would definitely at some point notice a gap when it comes to gender diversity. So we wanted to make sure that this was our, our forefront knowledge and it was something that we're actively working on. So for gender diversity and with what I do at She Code Africa, I mentioned earlier that I'm the founder of She Code Africa and She Code Africa is currently the largest women in tech organization and community in Africa. Um, I spoke with Routine and we decided to bring in what I do at She Code Africa into open source community Africa, basically through a partnership. What did that result in? It resulted in us forming what we call at the moment Women of Open Source Community Africa or in short, WASCA. Now, what um, what did this mean for us? It meant that we were infusing women from our Shikoda Africa community, women developers, designers, community builders, and in across all fields, open source fields that are interested in open source, into we're infusing them into the programs that we're running within Oscar. And what did that result in? We saw a 40% growth in female participation across general programs. That was a huge plus on that. And remember, our main goal was to create more diversity. And at the moment, we saw 40% growth in female participation across programs. That also means that nine, we, saw, oh, we also saw 90% of ladies make their first contributions, their first open source contributions to organizations like Jenkins, Django, Anitabog, Microsoft Azure, Chaos, Layer 5, and so many others that I kind of put the list on here. What does that mean for people like this, especially for these women? Being able to um, give them opportunities to not just make their first open source contributions, but to make it to renowned organizations like this, gave them an opportunity to boost their careers, to boost their CVs, to make, you know, proud claims on social media and you know, talk about how, oh, I made my first open source contribution and not just to any organization, but I made my first open source contribution to an organization like Jenkins. I'm sure it's something that an employer will be interested in. So what this also resulted in while giving them this opportunity like this also resulted in them going ahead to speak on our behalf, that's advocate for us to other people in other communities and the word was spreading like that. The other thing we also noticed that we noticed a 75% conversion rate from community members, our community members to project maintainers and community builders. That was a huge thing for us because not only do we want these people to, you know, start contributing to open source, we also want, remember, keyword sustainability. We also wanted to create sustainability in a way that, you know, people, the pipeline keeps going, but people are still active in different stages of their careers. So seeing this um people move from just being community members or contributors to now being project maintainers and growing up that career ladder or that you know growth path was a huge thing for us the next thing now um you know having scaled partnership what we now focused on as a team was you know trying to form like an actual core team if we've been able to you know click partnership click um programs and events click community, have a community platform, all of those things, we need to have like an actual core team. And so we set up a core team, like I mentioned earlier, of the six founding members, we set, set up a core team. We have a larger team, but this core team consists of team leads from the different teams that we have. We have um, six founding members who are the core team members. One person, Ogene Yoma, she um, specifies on partnerships and you know works with our partnership, um, different partners that we have to create sustainability in our partnerships. We have myself and Samsung uh, Godi, the co-founders, who we both basically do is oversee every of the operation. We have Bolaji Ayodeji. Bolaji is the community manager. So everything when it comes to community, we have somebody who's fully focused on it and who has experienced skills in community building. We have Princess. Princess is the um, 
engineering manager when it comes to our engineering projects, open source projects that we work, but within the team and, you know, the one with um, focused on community as well. And we have our design lead. One beautiful thing that we've also tried to do and we're continuously doing within the open source ecosystem is make sure that we're amplifying on other ways to contribute to open source. And for us to do that, we need to have, we introduced um, design contributions. And for us to, you know, achieve success in that role, we had Perry lead the design team. Perry is a very experienced, um, Perry Piso Jame is a very experienced designer and she currently leads the design um, design team and design section for the organization. So where are we now in 2022? Right from 2018, with the slide I showed earlier, into 2022, that's a couple of years that have gone by. Where are we currently and what have we been able to achieve with everything I've talked about? So far, at the moment, we have over 47 or 47 chapters in eight African countries. This is a huge goal for us because, like we said, we're trying to make sure that we are evangelizing the gospel of open source. And what does that mean for us? A chapter, at least a chapter in every African country. So far, it's 47 chapters in eight African countries. And these eight African countries are some of the most active developer countries in the African ecosystem. I'm talking about Nigeria, Kenya, um, Nigeria, Kenya, and we're also looking at countries like Ghana, um, Rwanda, um, and so others. We also have 58 community advocates or leads. These 58 community advocates or leads, who are they? These are people who are helping build and run these different chapters in these different communities that we've talked about. Because we're trying to grow, we're trying to expand the reach and make sure, like I said earlier, at least one chapter in every African country. What these community leads are also doing is they're advocating for us, they're spreading the word of mouth. So from us to them, from them to the community members, and then from those community members to like other people as well, that's how it's literally moving. It's like a effect and we've been able to grow to over 3,000 members just by everything that we have been doing so far that's a huge goal for us starting an ecosystem from a community into a larger movement with over 3,000 members at the moment and so many social media impressions from um, the different activities that we have been doing so what does this mean for you who is listening into this session how can you take the lessons that I have shared from my talk today into what you're trying to do in your own region, or how can you key into what we're currently doing in the African open source ecosystem? One is collaboration. And by collaboration, what do I mean? You know, build, connect, partner with existing communities who have grassroots reach in these different regions or in the region that you're trying to get into. These communities have already done the grassroots work. They have set the foundation for you. All you just need to do is either partner with them, connect to them, or build on what it is that they and build on what it is that they already have done. You don't need to go in there and try to like do the you know groundwork and try to do all of those things. Try to find communities, except there aren't communities in your region that are already doing things like this. If there are, don't undermine the, um, their existence. Reach out to them, partner with them, and build on what it is that they're already doing. It goes a very, very long way. And it also shows that you appreciate the effort that they have made into setting up that ecosystem within that region. The second thing is diversity. And by diversity, I'm not talking about gender diversity in this instance. I'm talking about diversity by incl being inclusive for Africans who are participating in your project. We get constantly, we get feedback from our participants about how some projects are, you know, very specific about things like, oh, um, we don't take in uh, contributors from this region, or we don't take in contributors from so, 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 and so country. Tone down country restriction, it helps a lot. This, um, getting feedback from these participants, from these community members, can we notice how demoralizing it can be for them? Oh, if so, so, and so organization is not willing to take me in, then I don't think this is for me. So try to tone down on your country restriction and be more inclusive to candidates from the African country. Reach out, you know, amplify more on your programs in these different regions. Sometimes you would be surprised as to how little the level of awareness of your program is or your community is when it comes to the African ecosystem which is why I started with, you know, collaboration, building or partnering with these grassroots communities like Open Source Communities Africa, and, you know, building on what it is that they have already done. And the next one is inclusion. How do you get to be so inclusive? By creating beginner-friendly projects, because a large percent of contributors in Africa identify as beginners. Because it's still a movement, it's still something that it's in 
it's very early stages well i won't say very early stages. maybe it's like in its early stages um a lot of people are still beginners when it comes to open source contributions so try to create beginner friendly projects if you want to be inclusive in you know getting more africans contribute to your project try to create more beginner friendly projects that would help them you know contribute more better contribute to the open source projects from there you could create a leeway getting them into becoming returning contributors because there's something that we've noticed it's a pattern that we've noticed for first-time contributors most especially there's always that first time love and wanting to return back to the main first project that you contributed to because one it was welcoming to you when you had absolutely no idea what it is that you wanted to do and they guided you and helped you make your first contribution so it gives your project a leeway into having returning open source contributors into your project I do know that, um, unfortunately, you may not have um, questions. You Sorry, you may have questions for me, but unfortunately, I'm not able to take it at the moment in person with you. So what you can do is connect with me on Twitter, you know, share the questions I have, share the insights, the feedback that you have with me on Twitter at Kolokodes, or you can reach out to me at Ada Unduka Oyum. I'm more than happy to have conversations around this and also, you know, create more partnerships, sustainable partnerships with you or with organizations that are looking to you know, key into the African open source ecosystem. And you can learn more about Open Source Community Africa by visiting oscafrica.org. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing your feedback, but please do enjoy the rest of your conference. Bye.